my name is Carlos, and today I'm going to show you some experiments I did to test the safety of the Cybertruck. There are a lot of videos out there about the Cybertruck, but the question I never see asked, uh, actually I see it asked all the time, but never answer or even speculate about, is about safety. The concern, of course, is that most cars use their body to absorb the impact, but as we all know, the Cybertruck is different. It's made out of this, you know, super hard, cold roll steel. Yeah. And a big part of the equation will definitely be the automated systems that prevent the car from crashing in the first place. But you can't go to the entity that regulates the safety of the cars and tell them like, it's not gonna crash. They'll be like, oh yeah? Tell that to the people who certify the number of votes in the Titanic. So if you can't deform the body to absorb the energy, how do you keep the passenger safe? I have a couple of ideas that I wanted to test. First, I needed some testing subjects. I needed something fairly fragile, but also consistent and you know, that I could get a bunch of copies of. And hopefully they'll look cool when they break. I designed a little cradle or seat for them. I even added a diagonal support in the front and that's to simulate the seat belt. Cool. For the body of the Cybertruck, I got a picture from Google. Then I scaled it so my egg would be about the size of a human. It turned out though that it was too big for my 3D printer, so I had to cut the rear end out. It won't look as cool, but it shouldn't affect the test since I'll be testing different methods against each other. While well, that's printing, let's talk about our methods to absorb the energy. If this is the Cybertruck... <laughs> okay, yeah, let's pretend that's the Cybertruck. All right, so the seat is here, right? And then passenger would be here. So in the event of a crash, the whole thing gets pushed in this direction. And if the body does not deform, all the energy is applied to the passenger. And that's bad, of course. <laughs> but I found a possible solution in a little item that I, that I use almost every day. And that is the bicycle helmet. And bike helmets, and probably most helmets out there, uh, they have a hard shell on the outside, but on the inside, it's all foam and straps. Um, but it's, you know, there's this big area of foam. So when you hit something, the hard shell actually prevents the sharp objects from coming through, but also spreads the impact area. If you have a, a wooden board or something and you hit it with a hammer, you kind of fill in your whole hand, not just on the little area where the hammer hit. And that's kind of what this does. And then once the impact is spread, the foam decelerates the, your head from the sidewalk or the curb or the, <laughs> or the asphalt. And so that makes, the foam kind of like an internal crumple zone. If you really think about it, the passengers actually attach to the seat belt. And the seat belt is usually attached to the body. So potentially, instead of attaching the seat belt to the cabin, to the body, you can remove this and then you can make a different piece and then attach the seat belt here. This piece, let's say the cabin piece, Actually, I should have made it a different color, but it doesn't matter. So this piece, uh, let's say this is the cabin, can move at a different speed than the rest of the body. And then we can actually add our crumple zone. And, you know, that could be here. I don't know. That could be there. Uh, <laughs> sure. Let's say that's the crumple zone. Uh, and, and this way, the car, obviously the energy, the car still moves in that direction. And the cabin eventually will move in that direction, but it's decelerated by the internal crumple zone. Plus you'll have airbags and the seat belts are not 100% stiff. So yeah, I could potentially see this working really well. Like we mentioned earlier, helmets do it all the time. To simulate the sliding cabin, I modified the seat where the egg goes. I added groups at the bottom, so when it hits, it can slide forward. Then I 3D printed it and You've seen this, yeah. I gotta put the plastic in, the do, yeah. Oh yeah, time lapse, of course. <laughs> and uh, after that, oh, oh, sorry, I forgot, I gotta take it out. Yeah, unstick it, 
Cool. Now I had all the pieces. So I started to put everything together and that's when I ran into a little problem. <laughs> when I designed it, I didn't think of my own fingers. So after a long time trying to make it work, I was able to put like one egg in there, but if I was gonna do several tests and I had to work for 10 minutes in between, that was not gonna work. So I had to go back to the drawing board or the drawing software and basically make a little storm roof so that I can maneuver around it. So I printed it again and you know how that goes, la la la. And here we go, cool. And this one had a couple of issues, but I was able to fix them and I was finally able to start testing. Perfect. Let's break some eggs. My goal was to find the point where the eggs would break consistently. I started with just eggs by themselves and I found that they start cracking at a 10 centimeter drop but they didn't break all the way until I dropped them from 30 centimeters. Then it was time to put them in the sever truck rig. The first test was my control, so it had no dampening at all. And the results were actually worse than the egg by itself, which surprised me actually. I'm not exactly sure why. I think that when the egg hits the beam, all the energy is concentrated in that little area. Imagine falling down into the ground versus falling down into a narrow beam. I've never done it, but I think the beam would hurt worse. Since all my dampening methods will have the same design for the seat, they should be comparable to each other. But, you know, it's still surprising. Now it's time to test the first dampening method. I use a spring attached to the back of the seat. In a real car, this would probably look like having a, the cabin on rails and putting shock absorbers between the exoskeleton and the cabin. But in reality, I don't think this is the most practical method for a production car because they will add weight, which is important for an electric car, and they will certainly add cost. I wanted to test it anyway, and I found that it improves egg safety quite a bit. They started cracking around 45 centimeters, and they consistently started breaking at 65, which is over three times as high as with no dampening. After that, it was time to use the crumple zone. And to simulate that, I made cardboard cutouts and placed them in between the cabin and the front of the body. And this was even a better dampening method. You can see the cardboard just crumples and absorbs the energy, whereas the spring bounces back. The cardboard consistently kept the egg safe all the way to 90 centimeters. After that, it became unpredictable. For example, at 110 centimeters, one of the tests cracked the egg really well, but on the next try, the egg bounced off the rig, completely unscathed. I was running out of eggs at this point after breaking almost 50. Apologies to my vegan friends. Rather than keep going in increments of 10, I decided to go for a last drop of 150 centimeters. The first attempt didn't work that well, I dropped it a little bit off-center, so the rig slid off in a weird way, and the egg actually flew off the rig and escaped, unbroken! So, I did it again, and this time, it worked. So in conclusion, yeah, that was a lot of eggs. Uh, I was just trying to do a proof of concept and not actually trying to do a cyber truck for eggs, so that would be cool though. Obviously, the scale is off and I'm just using cardboard and like a spring that I stole from an old lamp. But the point was to prove that there are ways to decrease the amount of energy that goes into passengers, even if the shell is really tough. And I don't know what ultimately what they're gonna do, but they can optimize the crumple zones or the materials or the, even the, you know, they can do simulations and a bunch of stuff. So I'm pretty sure the Cybertruck is gonna be really safe, uh, at least for passengers. For pedestrians, 
Yeah, I don't know. Other than the automated systems that everyone's talking about, I haven't really given that much thought, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you like, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.